guys welcome back to my channel today I'm gonna do a story about this house and this family that bought their dream home and then began getting stalked this one's really creepy because I mean I don't think it's something paranormal I think it's definitely somebody and it happened not too long ago right in New Jersey so if you guys like these type of videos don't forget to like subscribe and let's get to it Maria and Derek brought us this couple they have three kids together which are five eight and ten they're in their 40s Derek had just celebrated his 40th birthday Maria is from Westfield New Jersey and Derek is actually from a working middle class in Maine and he ended up going to Manhattan and he started working for an insurance insurance company and he ended up working his way up to become the senior vice president of this insurance firm so he was making great money this brings them to buying the home of their dreams it wasn't far at all from maria's home growing up it was just a few blocks away so when they came across this home they were thrilled and let me tell you about this house it wasn't just any old house it was like a mansion in my eyes I mean call me poor but to me this house is basically a mansion it was 1.3 million dollars it was 657 Boulevard Avenue it was huge but if you look at the outside it almost reminds me of like an older farmhouse it's beautiful 3,900 square feet and then it had six bedrooms and three and a half bathrooms an attic and a basement like I said not only did they pay 1.3 million dollars for this home they ended up putting over a hundred thousand dollars worth of renovations in before they even moved in so they had workers in and out um, you know ripping stuff out putting new stuff in it was a little bit outdated and it just need a little revamp nothing wrong with that on June 9th 2014 Derek goes to his home and they weren't living in it yet mind you he goes to check on the renovations make sure everything was going well and then as he was getting ready to leave he ended up checking the mail and there was like some bills and whatever some just like junk mail but then he came across a handwritten letter and he was like weird what's this maybe it was from a neighbor who knows so he opens it up and on the front of the envelope it said to the new owner and this is where i'm going to read it to you it says dearest new neighbor at 657 boulevard allow me to welcome you to the neighborhood this is where it all begins it says how did you end up here did 657 boulevard call to you with its force within 657 boulevard has been the subject of my family for decades now as it approaches its 110th birthday i have been put in charge of watching and waiting for its second coming my grandfather watched the house in the 1920s and my father watched in the 1960s it is now my time do you know the history of the house do you know what lies within the walls of 657 boulevard why are you here i will find out in the letter it makes it very apparent that whoever wrote this letter has been keeping their eyes on them because it talks about their minivan it talks about the renovations going on in the home and then it says i see you have already flooded 657 boulevard with contractors so that you can destroy the house as it was supposed to be tis 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 bad move you don't want to make 657 Boulevard unhappy. Now, earlier in the week, Maria and Derek had went to the house with their three kids, and the three kids were running around, playing with neighborhood kids, meeting kids. Um, it, you know, typical, right? Well, in the letter, this is what it says. You have children. I have seen them so far. I think that there are three that I have counted. And then it says, more on the way? Question mark. And then it goes on to say, do you need to fill the house with the young blood I requested? Better for me. Was your house too small for the growing family? Or was it greed to bring me your children? Once I know their names, I will call to them and draw them to me. Now, the envelope had no return address. And it goes on to say, who am I? There are hundreds and hundreds of cars that drive by 657 Boulevard each day. Maybe I am one. Look at all the windows you can see from 657 Boulevard. Maybe I am one. Look out as many windows you can in 657 at all the people who stroll by each day. Maybe I am one. And this is where the end of the letter comes and it says, welcome my friends, welcome. Let the party begin. 
And then in cursive font at the bottom, it says the watcher. This freaked him the fuck out. So he ran inside. He's turning off all the lights so that nobody could see him. He calls the Westfield Police Department. They come out and of course, super unhelpful. And the police officer said, well, you got to move some of this construction equipment in case they try to throw it into a window. Really, I don't understand why that would be like this is what we got to do you got this terrifying letter let's move the construction equipment i don't know maybe in his mind he was trying to help um i feel like that was probably stupid if anything the construction equipment probably helped shield some of the windows so, so maybe it would obstruct their views and make it a little bit harder to see through the window that's just my guess Derek goes back home after all this is going on where Maria and the kids are and he tells them what happened. He's freaked out. This is where they send an email to John and Andrea Woods, which are the people they bought the house from. And in the email, he goes on to say what had happened and if they had any idea who the watcher could be. Because in the letter that he had gotten in the envelope, it also said, ask the Woods to bring me young blood and it looked like they listened. The next morning, they they received an email back from the woods and it says a few days before moving out the woods had also received a letter from the watcher the note had been odd she said and made similar mentions of the watchers family observing the house over time but Andrea said she and her husband had never received it, anything like it in the 23 years that they lived in the house and sadly they had thrown the letter away without much thought to it. And the next day is when the Woods and Maria went to the police station together. The detective told them not to tell anybody about the letters because now everything was under investigation and the neighbors and everybody could be possible suspects. For the next few weeks, they were really, you know, freaked out and on high alert as any family would be. They, every time they took their kids to the house to check on renovations or do work or whatever they needed to do, they always kept them in close contact. And if they kind of went around a corner and weren't in eyesight. They would freak out, yell their names, make sure that they could find them. And this is where it gets really odd. One of the neighbors had asked Derek if he could take a tour inside the house and see what was going on, see the changes. And when he was inside, he made a really bizarre comment. He said that the wife said, it'll be nice to have some young blood in the neighborhood. Now, I don't know about you guys. That's not um, a term thing you hear often, young blood the only time i really hear somebody say young blood if they're talking about like the rapper young blood is that a rapper i think it is but really it's not something people typically say a lot he froze in his tracks when she said that for real though if you're getting stalked and you're on high alert why would you let a neighbor come into your house and check out what's going on because obviously that neighbor is a stranger you don't really know them i wouldn't let be letting anybody into my home if i received emails or letters like that two weeks after the first letter arrived maria goes back to the house to check out some paint samples and to grab some mail once again she recognizes the thick envelope with the handwriting on the front immediately she calls the police and this is what the letter says Welcome again to your new home at 657 Boulevard. The workers have been busy and I have been watching you unfold carfuls of your personal belongings. The dumpster is a nice touch. Have they found what is in the walls yet? In time they will. This time the watcher in the letter calls them directly by their last name, Mr. and Mrs. Broadus, but they ended up spelling the name wrong. Which made them wonder, have they been close enough that the watcher overheard them be called by their last name? Could it be a contractor? Could it be that neighbor that came into their home? What's really creepy too is in the letter, the watcher refers to each child by their birth order and not only that, but by their nicknames. The letter, it also says, I am pleased to know your names now and the name of the young blood you have brought to me. You certainly say their names often. The letter also asks about one particular child as well. Apparently, the watcher had seen the child painting on an easel on one of the enclosed porches, and the watcher writes in the letter, is she the artist in the family? 657 Boulevard is anxious for you to move in. It has been years and years since the young blood ruled the hallways of this house. Have you found all of the secrets it holds yet? Will the young blood play in the basement, or are they too afraid to go down there alone? 
I would be very afraid if I were them. It is far away from the rest of the house. If you were upstairs, you would never hear them scream. Will they sleep in the attic or will you sleep on the second floor? Who has the bedrooms facing the street? I'll know as soon as you move in. It will help me to know who is in which bedroom. Then I can plan better. All of the windows and doors in 657 Boulevard allow me to watch you and track you as you move through the house. Who am I? Am I the watcher and have I been in control of 657 Boulevard for the better part of two decades now? The Woods family turned it over to you. It was their time to move on and kindly sold it when I asked them to. I pass by many times a day. 657 Boulevard is my job, my life, my obsession. And now you are too, Braddis family. Welcome to the product of your greed. Greed is what brought the past three families to 657 Boulevard. And now it has brought you to me. Have a happy morning and day. You know I will be watching. Immediately after this, the family stopped bringing their kids anywhere near this home. They said that they had no idea if they were even going to move in at this point. This is where a few weeks later, the third third letter arrived and this one said where have you gone to 657 Boulevard is missing you this home was built in 1905 and they say it's the grandest home in the area like in that little town block whatever you want to call it when the woods put it on the market they had received multiple offers instantly well above asking price so this made the Broadduses think that maybe it was somebody who lost to a bidding war and they really wanted this house. They had their heart set on it. Maybe this is like their revenge or they're being spiteful. But the Woods had something different to say. They said one person backed out because they had gotten really sick with a bad medical diagnosis and the other person had already found another home. Here's where it gets a really, really strange. So the letters indicated that it came from right around this area because they had been processed in Kearney, the U.S. Postal Services Distribution Center in Northern New Jersey, but it was first postmarked on June 4th, which means it was before the sale was actually public and the woods say that they had never put up a for sale sign and this was also only one day after the contractors arrived and during this time when the contractors arrived it was all the renovations were inside of the house people say that lived nearby didn't even realize there was contractors in the home that's how discreet they were then when derek and maria showed where the easel was on the enclosed porch basically completely hidden by vegetation and bushes and things like that it's really hard to see from the street unless somebody was directly behind the home now a few days later they had went to another home for a barbecue for people who had just moved in derek was talking to a man named john schmidt who at the time lived two doors down from him. He ended up telling them about the Langfords. They lived between them. Peggy Langford was in her 90s and she had several adult children that were in their 60s that lived with her. And one of the children that lived with her didn't work and was always home. Now the father of this family had already passed away, which is odd because the watcher says that he had been the watcher for about two decades. The police ended up interviewing Michael and he denied knowing anything about this. And sadly, there's no evidence and there wasn't anything the police could do. This is where Derek had basically had enough. He became obsessed. He had spent all this money, all this time, and now he can't even move into this house. So he decides to set up his own investigation and became utterly obsessed with finding who's tormenting them. So he sets up webcams, he sets up surveillance cameras, and he even sits outside all night watching seeing what's going on. He also ended up hiring a private investigator and he also in hired a former FBI agent. And then they also ended up hiring another FBI agent to that is good at making assessments to see by the lettering, you know, to scope out, is it a male, is it a female, what age are they in, what's their personality traits, to be able to kind of break down who this is, to give them more of an idea. By reading the letters, he said they're a ferocious reader. They're, some of the words had double spaces. A lot of the um, wording were spelled wrong. And some of the words that they would use, like warm and humid, um, there's other things suggested that they were older. 
it's pretty obvious that whoever the watcher is is mad about new money moving into town in another one of the letters they wrote the house is crying from all of the pain it is going through you have changed it and made it so fancy you are stealing its history it cries for the past and what it used to be in the time when i roamed its halls the 1960s were a good time for 657 boulevard when i ran from room to room imagining the life with the rich occupants there the house was full of life and young blood then it got old and so did my father when he kept watching until the day he died and now i watch and wait for the day when the young blood will be mine again the agents thought maybe it could be an old housekeeper or maybe a nanny somebody who worked in the house that wanted to have the house but couldn't ever afford it then one of the house painters ended up telling the family they noticed something really bizarre it was that the couple directly behind this home kept lawn chairs out in their house really really close to the property and the contract worker says one day i was looking out the window and i saw this older guy sitting in one of the chairs he wasn't facing the house but he was facing the broadduses so they thought maybe that's that could be them considering they're right behind the house they could see more than other people could they could hear more than other people could maybe that's how they knew their names their nicknames their birth dates so finally the renovations come to an end the new alarm system was all set up and in place but they still didn't feel good about moving in so they ended up renting the home out this time the Broadduses stayed living with the mom of Maria then in another letter the watcher writes 657 Boulevard is turning on me. It is coming after me and I don't understand why. What spell did you cast on it? It used to be my friend and now it is my enemy. I am in charge of 657 Boulevard. It is not in charge of me. I will fend off its bad things and wait for it to become good again. It will not punish me. I will rise again. I will be patient and wait for this to pass and for you to bring the young blood back to me. 657 Boulevard needs young blood. It needs you. Come back. Let the young blood play again like I once did. Let the young blood sleep in 657 Boulevard. Stop stop changing it and let it alone family had just had enough they were fighting all the time derek was taking lots of different medications just to be able to sleep they were both constantly having nightmares they constantly felt watched like i said they lived with maria's mother because they had already sold their old home um, maria started going to therapy she was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder people thought maybe they were just making up to get attention to get a movie deal because netflix did just buy the rights to this story to make a movie pretty soon but then people are like you know what maybe they are telling the truth because they took such a loss with money they don't even own the rights to the story anymore and they got nothing out of it but what seems to be a lot of stress and let's be honest what family of three wants to live with their mother-in-law I can't tell you a single person they even got asked to be on the Today Show to talk about what had happened. They wanted nothing to do with it. They really just wanted to wash their hands clean of this home. They didn't want to bring any more attention to themselves, especially to their kids, because that's what they were scared of most is something happening to them because the letters were very threatening, mentioned the kids, I would be the exact same way they had gotten over 300 media requests to talk about this and they haven't said one word to any of them because they're terrified as time went on they ended up looking into the dna of some of the letters which ended up actually belonging to a woman this is where they decided to look more closely at abby langford the family i was telling you about that had kids that were six in their 60s well she's a real estate agent could she be mad that she didn't get commission from this home? She also worked at Lourdes and Taylor and they were able to snag a water bottle from her secretly when she was on a shift and it didn't end up matching up. So she is ruled out of a suspect. Some people thought maybe that they had had like buyer's remorse and they realized they couldn't afford the home so they were trying to get out of it with some big elaborate scheme or you know insurance fraud but let's be honest insurance doesn't cover threatening letters. The police even took the DNA of Maria and Derek came up not them. I forgot to mention when they were renting to another family that had children they had received another letter that said 
Violent winds and bitter cold to the vile and spiteful Derek and his wench of a wife, Maria. You wonder who the watcher is? Turn around, idiots. Maybe you even spoke to me, one of the so-called neighbors who has no idea who the watcher could be. Or maybe you know and are too scared to tell anyone. Good move. Which is funny because remember the contractor that said when he was painting he looked out the window and saw those oddly close chairs to the property where somebody was facing? Maybe it could be them. The letter also goes on to say, I walked by the news trucks and when they took over my neighborhood and mocked me, I watched as you watched from the dark house in an attempt to find me. Telescopes and binoculars are wonderful inventions. 657 Boulevard survived your attempted assault and stood strong with its army of supporters, barricading its gates. My soldiers of the boulevard followed my orders to a T. They carried out their mission and saved the soul of 657 Boulevard with my orders. All hail the watcher. The renter was mentioned. He was spooked but agreed to stay if the Broadduses installed more cameras around the house. But the letter also had said, maybe a car accident, maybe a fire, maybe something as simple as a mild illness that never seems to go away, but makes you feel sick day after day after day after day. Maybe the mysterious death of a pet loved one suddenly die, planes and cars and bicycles crash, bones break. But still to this day, they own the home, but they don't reside in it. They rent it out. They have no idea who it is. Law enforcement, the prosecutors, they're still doing what they can to try to figure out who has done this. But the sad part is, is that even if they do get found, not much will really probably happen to them. But I think if anything, it'll give the Broadduses a peace of mind and maybe help their reputation come back because a lot of people had really hurtful, mean things to say. Sometimes their kids would get picked on at school about it or get made fun of because they lived a few blocks away. You know, they would see their, what would have been their neighbors, you know, at the YMCA or here or there. And some people were really skeptical of them and made fun of them would you know, gossip, blah, 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 stuck up bitches. But it's really fucking up story and it's really sad and I really don't think these people did it to get attention to get money because if anything they completely lost out and this has really probably been a nightmare for them so I hope you guys like this video let me know if you guys have heard about this story couldn't imagine going through this um, especially with having kids it's terrifying if I didn't have kids I'd say fuck you I'm moving in but when you have kids kind of changes the games so I can't wait to hear what you guys think I love you guys so much don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you soon